Welcome to DCA Wildcats. This is episode 210 as we are closing in on Gateway to Heaven coming up in just a few days. This is D-Wall here. Thank you for joining me once again for another episode. And tonight we have a very loaded lineup including a preview of the Wildcats Gateway to Heaven ladder match. If you saw Takedown the other day, then you know what's going to happen tonight. It's a six-woman tag team match featuring six of the eight women that will be competing in the ladder match coming up in just a few days. Also, we have a face-to-face -face contract signing between Ovana Morgan and Beatrix Decker before their big title-for-title -title match coming up at Gateway to Heaven. That is also tonight. But we're going to be kicking off the action with another Dead Woman's 5 qualifier to see who will be moving on to Revelations 9 for the Rising Star Championship. Of course, we already know Heather Ray, the champion, will be there. We know after the last episode of Wildcats that, that Mia Nishimura will be in that match as well. She qualified on the last episode. So now we're going to find out who will be the third woman out of five in that match. And here comes Abby Lawrence, a mainstay in the Armbar Air Society, has made a few appearances here in DCA. But she will now be looking to qualify for the Dead Woman's Five at Revelations 9. The Revelations card is filling out pretty quickly. As we already know that the Wildcats and the world titles will have their matches confirmed after Gateway to Heaven, more than likely. Every championship in the DCA will be defended at Revelations 9 as per usual. And everyone wants to make a name for themselves and be on that card. Be a two-night card as far as we know right now. That can always change. But... Typically, it has been a two-night card in the past number of years. Here comes entrant number two, a woman who said that she wanted to earn her way into the match at Revelations, wanted to earn her way to a Rising Star Championship match, Yuki Mori making her way to the ring she's uh rested up after the battles that she's had over the last few months with roman reigns and elizabeth ronson both over in uwl but now she's looking to earn a spot at revelations 
a lot of people in the back I know there's some people who were kind of upset at Yuki for how she got a spot at Revelations last year when she was just you know when Oseko made that mother versus daughter match last year at Revelations but this year Yuki Mori is looking to I guess quell those doubts and earn herself a opportunity at a championship at Revelations earn a match at Revelations 9 so will it happen well we'll see she's got three other women she's got to go through if she's going to make it there to that matchup so it's not going to be easy for her by any means to win this opportunity to win a shot at Heather's championship Entrant number three is a woman who has been chasing after the Rising Star title for a very long time and a woman who returned last year at Revelations in the Dead Woman's Five match. Kim Possible. The KP experience has arrived. And Kim Possible has been chasing this championship for the longest time. Ever since she came in the DCA, she's wanted this championship. And uh, now she has an opportunity to earn her way back to the Dead Woman's Five. If you remember, she and Bella DeSantos were the final two in that matchup at Revelations 8. And it was Bella who came out on top and won the Rising Star title on that night. So you know Kim Possible after coming so close so many times to winning that title you know she wants to earn an opportunity back to the dead woman's five and this time not become second place not get just close she wants to win she wants that championship and if she wins this match she has an opportunity to do it now if you remember again like I said Kim Possible returned to DCA at Revelations 8 for that Dead Woman's 5 this year it's not going to be so simple she's got to earn it and here comes the fourth and final entrant in this contest looking to qualify for the Dead Woman's 5 Chloe Jane Ulrich CJU is in the building one of the newest members of the Wildcats roster and looking to make her statement in the Rising Star division she's been very impressive but has not picked up a win yet however she's also not been pinned yet so can the number one angel CJU punch her ticket to Revelations fans are on her side but we'll see how she does in this uh, fatal four way matchup first woman to gain a pinfall or submission we'll move on to Revelations 9 as we have two more qualifiers after this not tonight obviously but as Yuki Mori just takes out CJU with a bulldog immediately but there will be two more qualifiers after this. There will be one on the next Wildcats. And then there will be one more after that. And that will be the last chance qualifier. Where we will have some of the ones from the previous uh, three qualifying matches. In that it will be five women. Or I think, believe five or six women in that contest. And the last woman standing in that will be the final entrant in the Dead Woman's Five. As Abby with a cover on Kim, only a one count. That's a Michinoku driver by Yuki Mori taking CJU down. There's a German suplex. Like I said, Yuki Mori wants to earn an opportunity. She said it multiple times. She wants to earn a spot at Revelations 9. 
and in the Rising Star title match. Of course, her mother Oseko has been wanting and has been very open about the fact that she wants to team with Yuki Mori and win tag team gold before her retirement this year. Two, no. And, and, and I know she's talked about, she talked about her retirement last year, but I think she's pretty dead set on it being this upcoming year. So within the next year. So time's ticking. As TJU is taking Kim Possible out right now with a dragon screw and working on the leg. As now she's got the kendo stick and just wails away on Kim with the kendo stick over and over again. But Kim coming back with it now. Like I said, later on tonight we have a big main event. Six woman tag to preview the Wildcats Gateway to Heaven match. And we're going to see Trixie Decker and Ovana Morgan in the same ring at the same time tonight. So you got to wonder how that's going to go. Also, a big grudge match that was made last episode. Ariane Sophie Jones will finally get her rematch against Danny Rojas tonight. And Michiko Melandro and Lauren Richfield are banned from ringside. So Lucinda made it clear that those two are not allowed in the building. They are not allowed at ringside for that matchup. So it's going to be one-on-one. -on -one and we're going to see if Ariane can get that victory that she's been wanting for so long. Also tonight, kind of two previews at once as Amy Lynn, one half of the Wildcats Tag Team Champions, will face off against the number one contender for the Fever Championship in Haley Jonas of course that's a kind of a preview of sorts for the matchup coming up between Haley and Selena Zeta at Gateway to Heaven for the Fever title and of course Amy Lynn and Betsy Chairshot will defend the Wildcats tag team titles against the Lotus Collective as CJU with a backbreaker butterfly backbreaker only a one count is now Kim taking it to Yuki Mori on the outside of the ring. Dragon screwed by CJU and now take it out the leg. And Kim has been on Yuki Mori through this entire match so far. Yeah, they're the Red Widow driver kick by Yuki. Kim Possible ever, uh, breaking that up quickly because she knew that could have been it. And CJ, you got taken out by a kick earlier, as you saw. And there's a Pele by Yuki. Yuki Mori is on fire right now, but she's got to be if she's going to win this match. out there CJU breaking that up is now Kim with a face buster and a shooting star press by Yuki Mori is now Kim going after Yuki here Yuki going for that Pele again and she gets it this could be a big win for Yuki Mori if she's able to pull it off here but I could say the same thing about the other three ladies as well because like I said everybody wants to get on that revelations card you do not want to be caught on the outside looking in on the biggest event in DCA's calendar it's a face buster by Kim but Yuki right there to break it up the whole time and then just runs into a kendo stick by CJU who's now getting a German and a wrist clutch lariat And now big heel kick by KP on to Abby. One, two, no. Again, you got to keep your head on a swivel in a match like this. Because everyone's in the ring at the same time. 
gonna be kind of hard to call all this action at once here. Up, oh, over from behind now, Yuki Mori getting caught by KP. As now, look at this, double team. And now Kim trying to go for the pin, but CJU broke it up before she got kicked in the face by Abby. And now, big Northern Lights suplex. And Abby gets taken down. Back and forth, these four women are going. All for an opportunity to go to Revelations, all for the right to challenge Heather Ray for the Rising Star title. And we're going to hear from Heather Ray later on as well. So it's going to be interesting. It'll be her first uh, words on DCA programming since she won the belt from Nova Kane back at Death and Defiance in a very brutal and bloody matchup. As now KP catching Yuki Mori on the run and just sends her outside the ring. Tossing her and CJU mocking KP telling her get out here and that's exactly what she's doing with that kendo stick breaking it over the body of Chloe as now Yuki Mori went for a kendo stick and KP has been on fire in this match. Trying to go for something but Yuki kept fighting it and she's fighting out of that firewoman's carry position and sends KP back inside the ring. And now it's down to Abby and KP. KP, what's the sitch on Abby? One, two, and Yuki Mori barely breaks that up. I mean, barely broke it up. Kick to the midsection. KP with some strikes on Yuki. CJU back inside the ring with the kendo stick onto Abby, but Abby comes back, head scissors. Yuki Mori back on the outside. Abby catching Chloe, uh, Chloe now from behind. Chloe with a Chloe with a dragon sleeper on KP, but Yuki breaking it up. And now, nope, oh, more strikes to Yuki Mori. Abby now, German suplex. And CJU, Tiger suplex. Yuki Mori with the Red Widow driver kick. She didn't see, she doesn't see KP there. And KP caught her. What's the sitch on the Yuki Mori? One, two, that is it. Yuki Mori may have had this one, but KP was in the ring, broke up the pin, and then right when Yuki got up, look at that, Red Widow driver kick, and Yuki Mori did not know who broke it up until she got grabbed by her. What's the cinch? And then that was all she wrote. KP is going back to Revelations. It's a heartbreaker for Yuki Mori, but Kim Possible gets one more shot to finally become Rising Star Champion at Revelations 9. Congratulations to KP on an incredible win here in this Fatal 4-Way. Yuki Mori might still have a chance in that last chance qualifier in a, in a few episodes, though. On episode 212, we'll see.
everything you've got Taking a break from all your worries Sure would help a lot Wouldn't you like to get away? I did exactly what I said I would do. I nearly killed Nova out there. She humiliated me a few months ago, so it was time for my revenge. Truthfully, she was never on my level. She got lucky once, and I proved that when I beat her for the Rising Star Championship. Since I have gold around my waist, I know everyone wants what's mine. The sad reality for them is they're never going to get it. I run this show. So anyone who steps to me will be dealt with the only way I know how. Making a bloodbath out of them just like I did Nova. So, if anyone's still brave enough to step to me, I dare you to do it. My reign of terror is only beginning. I plan on being champion forever. The devil's favorite daughter was born to be on top, born to lead the pack. So that's exactly what I'll do. There you have it. You just heard from the Rising Star champion, Heather Ray, she's got her first two challengers already set for Revelations 9 in Mia Nishimura and now Kim Possible. So she's got to be very wary. That Dead Woman's 5 match, it's a five-way elimination match. So Heather Ray, she's got to be very, very mindful of that. She's got to be careful because she's, she's going to have four people breathing down her neck at Revelations if she's going to walk out with that Rising Star Championship. But right now, we've got a big grudge match on deck. Ariane Sophie Jones has been waiting for this for weeks and weeks now. Another shot at Danny Rojas, and tonight she finally gets that shot. And remember, at Gateway to Heaven, Ariane's going to get Danny Michko and Lauren Richfield in a six woman tag match. The only problem is we still don't know who her tag team partners are going to be. Ariane's been looking for months now, ever since this match, or well, for weeks, not hadn't been months, but it's been weeks since this match was made, and Ariane has still not found two people to team with her. I mean, let's be honest, I'm sure she would have picked certain people, but they're in the Gateway to Heaven ladder match already. If you know, you know. And Ariane doesn't want to be the type of person that brings her business into trying, you know, potentially ruining their opportunity at the Wildcats title. So she's trying to find two other people, but she hasn't found them yet. So I don't know. She's going to have to find somebody in the next couple of weeks, or excuse me, next couple of days, not even weeks. We're days away from Gateway to Heaven. And here comes Danny Rojas, Yara's most dangerous woman by a landslide. And ever since Danny Rojas made her shocking debut here on Wildcat, she has been a disruptor in more senses than in more ways than one. Helping Michiko take Carmen Cortez out, or at least, you know, being her heavy after Carmen got taken out. She's the reason why Ariane has been on this quest against Michiko for so long now, because that's why she hasn't been able to get to Michiko because of Danny. Remember, Ariane challenged Michiko to a match on Wildcats. Ariane 
was shocked as we were when Michiko said, no, you challenged for a match. You didn't challenge me. And that's when she brought Danny out. Danny blitzed her in that match. So now, ever since then, this has just been a constant back and forth between Ariane and Michiko's crew. The Melandro project, if you will. As now, it's finally on. Ariane and Danny, one-on-one. -on -one. No Michiko, no Lauren. It's just one-on-one -on -one here tonight. And let's be honest, Danny Rojas can get the job done. If you know her history, if you know what she's capable of, she is a very, very dangerous woman. No doubt about it, no question about it, this woman is dangerous. This woman is a threat to anyone and anybody. But Ariane is not going to back down. She doesn't back down from anybody or anything. Cover. One. No. That's why she's wanted Michiko for so long. That's why she's been asking for this match. And Ariane understands the assignment. She understands what she's here for. And if she can take Danny out tonight, if she can get a victory here tonight, that would be a great bit of confidence going in to Gateway to Heaven. Even if she doesn't know who her partners are just yet, this would give her a bit of confidence that she needs. As now, Ariane back inside the ring. And pop-up powerbomb. One, two, and no. Of course, Ariane has also had desires to go after the Rising Star title, but because of this Michiko thing, she hasn't had a shot. One, two, no. She hasn't had an opportunity to even sniff the Rising Star title because of this issue. So she's probably going to have to get Michiko and her crew in the rearview mirror completely before, oh my god! Ran right into that kick. That might be it, but Danny grabbing the bottom rope, and that might have been the only thing that saved her because she ran right into that kick, and I don't think she knew it was anywhere where she was until the very last second. Ariane now. Look at this. Shoulders. Shoulder bomb. Wasn't even a power bomb. That was a shoulder bomb. One, two, and no. Again, Ariane getting a shoulder up. Or excuse me, Danny getting a shoulder up. Ariane has been completely in control for a good bit here. And Danny finally is trying to get some offense going with these multiple headbutts. Ariane was prepared this time. She's had weeks to scout Danny, obviously, from all the beatdowns and, and backstage attacks that Ariane has suffered through. She knows what Danny's capable of now, so this isn't going to be another blindside like it was the first time. Ariane in, in trouble here in the corner. Uh, Goose that boot away and gets a back, gets a kick to back end, and went for that pump kick, doesn't connect. This is going to be a back and forth one here, folks. Like I said, Ariane knows Danny at this point, and she's not going to be surprised by a whole lot. As now she's just stomping away with those cowgirl boots. And now with the knees, and another one into the cover. One, two, no. Remember, this whole thing started because Ariane wanted to stick up for Carmen Cortez after Michiko took her out a number of months ago. And Ariane has been like, I wouldn't say like a sister, but there's a closeness there between them, even though Carmen would like to make you think that it's even closer than close. But, you know, that's a different story for a different day on that dynamic but nonetheless it, there's a closeness between them and Michiko doesn't like that too much and she feels like Ariane should abandon Carmen like everybody else should because of how Carmen's abandoned people in the past I understand that logic 
because Carmen has done a lot of horrible things and she has pissed off a whole hell of a lot of people in her life. So there's not even, Endless would not even begin to describe how many enemies Carmen has made throughout her entire life that are probably gunning for her or want to gun for her. So, Michiko being on that list does not shock me. As now Ariane, look at this. Gorilla Press, no, look at that. Into a sunset flip, one, two. And Ariane countering, one. Only one count. Ariane off the ropes, went for a clothesline. Danny blocked it, and now Danny with some strikes in. And now, knee crusher. And that's not gonna help Ariane at all with their bare with their bare knees. And now look at this. A Texas clover leaf. Or in this case, a Yara clover leaf. Locked in by Danny. And I gotta I gotta wonder, what is Danny's motivation for doing what she's doing? Why is she you know, why is she aligned with Michiko? What is what is the relationship between Danny and Carmen? I understand maybe the relationship between Lauren and, and with Lauren. Oh my god! Reverse exploder suplex. Ashley, get down there. You can slow as Monahan. Two. No. At least Monahan has an excuse. He has old knees, but you, you're young. You're spry. You can get up. You can get down on the ground and cut count to three faster. I'm pretty sure. Don't, 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 don't be like Monahan, uh, Ashley. You're better than that. That's why we hired you. Anyway, what I'm saying, what I was saying is, oh my God, on a super kick. What I'm saying is, we know Warren may have. Well, I mean, I know Michiko said that the reason Lauren is with them is because people didn't see how didn't see Lauren as you know anyone important anymore that she's still a threat and I understand that part but I also can understand when I cover off that guillotine leg drop two no I can also understand how Lauren would might want revenge on Carmen because it's not like Carmen and Zahaya have had a healthy relationship at all and it's not like Lauren is fighting for the honor of ZCW or fighting for Zahaya's honor or anything like that. Oh my God! Spinning Tombstone Pile Driver. Two. No. Called that That's Incredible back in the day. I still remember both of those. But I think Lauren more or less is more of the fact that she's sick and tired of Carmen being in the spotlight. When she, when Lauren may feel like she doesn't deserve it, I understand that part because Danny, Danny now in trouble. Oh my God! Girl, a press uppercut. Two, and again Danny gets out. So I understand Lauren's position if that's the case. But Danny, on the other hand, I have no idea what that's about. Absolutely none. Ah. Oh. I didn't even know Danny and Carmen had any history at all, really. As now, oh, we're going for that tombstone again, and she gets it. Then again, Danny, if you will also remember, Danny cost Rebby the Queens of Wrestling title. Now, I don't know if Danny and Rebby have history because they're both mercenaries, in a sense. Because we saw that with Ruby and Malone when Michiko took her out too. It's now big lariat from the top row. But also remember cover. Two, no. Also remember Michiko and Revy have had history back in anime championship wrestling. And that rivalry was, that rivalry ran real deep back in the day. Maybe still does. They may still have some beef there from ACW that carried over into DCA, and that's also part of this. So there's a lot of interconnecting threads going on here, but now Ariane is all alone. She's got to find two people at Gateway to Heaven to team with her as a fallaway smooth salt, and again Danny gets out of it. Danny Rojas is as tough as they come, and I think 
Ariane is figuring that out slowly but surely. Now Danny with that neck breaker, but Ariane close to the ropes. And Danny does not like that one bit. But she's got to stay focused if she's going to win this match. Went for a knee lift, didn't connect. Ariane with the leg scissors pin. Two. Two count. Off the ropes, no. Drop kick doesn't connect. Danny gets a back elbow from Ariane. Ariane went for the pump kick. She went for a kick. Both women going for kicks here. Obviously, they didn't connect. Irish slip into the corner. Danny running in. Went for a right hand. Gets one from Ariane. Ariane looking for the famous sir. It gets power bomb. Big maneuver there. But two and a half. Whether or not you like Danny Rojas and the company she keeps, you cannot deny that this woman has talent and this woman is going to be a threat coming into the future here on DCA Wildcats. That's for sure. She has really made a name for herself since she arrived on the scene here. Marianne, oh look at this. Ran into a small package. Two, no. Danny off the ropes, looking for something. Went for an axe handle, doesn't get it. He got a knee block. Forearm by Danny. Super kick block. Kick to the midsection. Big DDT. Very nice combination by Ariane. Two, and again, Danny has to get the ropes. That's the second time now that Danny Rojas has had to use the ropes to get out of a pinfall attempt because she knew. She didn't have any other options. Right hand. Knee no blocked. More rights. More kicks. More strikes by Ariane. That might be the only thing she can do right now. Off the ropes. Pop up. Power bomb again. As now. Ariane's in the driver's seat. Off the ropes. Went for something there, but Danny gets the elbow in. Went for a drop kick. Arian went for a boot. Jawbreaker. Sending Danny into the corner. And now Danny gets multiple headbutts. Understandably, this has been a very hard fought matchup as Arian runs in. No. Didn't have enough to run in right there. That might have cost him. Danny rolls through. Knees countered. Right hand countered. And now more strikes by Danny, sending Ariane into the turnbuckles. Up on top now. What is Danny thinking here? Oh, she's thinking the most overused move in virtual wrestling, the superplex. And Ariane is down. It's now up top. Big fist drop to the midsection. I've never seen that. Two. No. I have never seen a fist drop to the midsection before. But it's effective. It was in the short term anyway, as Ariane is right back in control now. Big pop kick. That's what she's looking. That's what she was looking for earlier. She was looking for that and did not get it. She got it earlier. And now there's the famous sir she wanted to hit. And this might be the beginning of the end here. Headlock driver. Cover. Two and no. I thought that was it, but Danny kicks out and now Danny going to the outside of the ring. Ariane trying to follow her. Forearm. Back elbow by Danny. Danny running in. Went for the lariat. Gets a kick to the midsection. Axe handle block. Danny. Oh, look at this. What is this? No, got caught. Power slam. 
it has been back and forth between these two women throughout this entire matchup. And now, Danny gets sent back inside the ring. Danny now went for something, got blocked. Both women blocking. Both women looking for something. Oh, there's the pump kick. And now up top, Ariane looking for elbow drop. No. Danny able to counter and get to Bulldog. It's now Luthes press. Right hands delivered. And Danny again, just when you think she's down, she gets right back to her feet, right back on the offense. Oh, went for a kick, got it blocked. She's holding her knee. It's now, uh oh. Again, driving Ariane down. And this time, no ropes, but Ariane had to kick out because the referee didn't see her hand on the rope. That would have been a very bad call right there. Ariane understanding that she needed to just go ahead and kick out, use that energy to kick out, but I didn't understand why she didn't want to expend it. Is now going for maybe a stunner off the top rope. That looked familiar from one of Carmen's friends from the past. Girlfriends. Ariane been watching the tapes, I see, but it didn't connect. Danny knew that all too well. And for Lariat. And Ariane went for the kick, got it blocked again. Drop kick, swatted it away. Nope. Back elbow. Drop kick, no. Nope, again, both of these women trying to do whatever it takes to win. Oh, there's the cowgirl kiss! And Danny ran right into it, but Ariane can't capitalize. Now she's trying to go for a pin. Two, three! She ran right into it out of nowhere, and Danny couldn't even avoid it. That cowgirl kiss comes out of nowhere. And Ariane gets the win. And that's has got to feel good for her. She's wanted that sweet revenge on Danny for so long. Look at this. Bang! Right on the jaw. And even though Ariane took a minute to kick to capitalize, Danny was already out. You could hear that kick all the way through the building, and with those hard cowgirl boots on, that was a that was a knockout anywhere on the planet. But now that Ariane has some momentum on her side, can she find two partners on the roster to team with her and join her brisket club, if you will, to take on Michigo, Danny, and Lauren at Gateway to Heaven? That's the question. I guess we still got a few more days to find out. words coming from you ladies and gentlemen we are back and I guess Ariane was leaving the building and Lauren Richfield's caught up to her Lauren wasn't allowed at ringside but I guess this isn't ringside and this isn't even in the building to protect technically this is outside the building so Lauren figured why not Danny couldn't get the job done, so now Lauren's looking to do the job herself. 
Ariane may have gotten the moral victory tonight, but this is why Ariane needs two partners to team with her at Gateway to Heaven because there's no way she can go through three women by herself no matter how much she says she wants to, no matter how much she says she's going to. Ariane's got a fight on her hands if she thinks she can go in there two on three, or excuse me, one on three at Gateway to Heaven. That's that's a that's a losing proposition by any me by any measure. Especially when you got somebody as powerful and as it's just you know, you, I don't know. When you got someone like that, like Lauren Richfield, a dangerous woman in her own right, gunning for you and then you got Danny Rojas as dangerous she is and then Michko who's as cunning as they come Ariane's gonna need some backup and I mean major backup at Gateway to Heaven in a few nights but now we get to this match and here comes the number one contender for the Wildcats Fever Championship in the Hellcat, Haley Jonas. And she will be taking on the, the temptress Selena Zeta at Gateway to Heaven with the Fever title on the line. Haley Jonas has made it a mission to win that belt ever since she came back to DCA. She beat Erica Blandelli, Morgan Raincroft, she beat them in a fatal four-way match in a few, a few weeks ago to earn that opportunity. And Ki Tae Young, too, in that match as well, excuse me. Ki Tae Young, Erica Blandelli, and Morgan Raincroft. She pinned Morgan Raincroft in that match to become number one contender. And now... Here comes the number one, or excuse me, here comes one half of the Wildcats Tag Team Champions in Amy Lynn. She and Betsy Chairshot will be defending those titles at Gateway to Heaven against the Lotus Collective, Mizumi and Nozomi. And this is going to be interesting to see how these two women collide. Amy Lynn is a very different woman than when she was the Wildcats champion. Because that's the last time I can remember these two women even being in the same vicinity as each other. Is back when Amy Lynn was Wildcats champion. But this is a very different woman from years and years ago. This woman is a very different woman. And she's one half of the Wildcats Tag Team Champions. But you can't doubt Amy Lynn. You can't doubt her skill. Being a former Wildcats Champion, that's saying a whole lot. And here we go. Amy Lynn and Haley Jonas one on one. It's going to be very interesting to see how these two women collide here and match up. Amy Lynn has got obviously her speed and quickness, her striking. Haley Jonas, more of a brawler, will ground and pound when necessary. Use her, bot her uh, boxing's background to her advantage. So it's going to be a mix, a, a mix match of styles, if you will. Cover off that knee to the back. Only gets one, though. As now it went for the lariat. Doesn't connect. And now, big stomp to the midsection. And 
Amy Lynn's going to have to do a lot more to put Haley Jonas down, and she's got to know that. She's not an idiot. She understands what she's gotten herself into here tonight. She understands what kind of match this is going to be. She knows that Haley Jonas is not just going to roll over and let her get her let herself get pinned right away. She's going to have to do a lot of damage to take Haley Jonas out. Two count off that senton, but only that. That's all she's going to get. And Haley retreating to the corner. It's now, oh, went for a boot, gets two boots for her troubles, and now here comes that ground and pound. Here comes the striking that I told you about. That's exactly what Haley Jonas is capable of right there. Cover off that right hand, only a two count. And I think what you're going to see here, what you're seeing is Haley Jonas delivering exactly what she's advertised. Ground and pound, striking, everything you can think of, that's exactly what she's capable of. So now look at this. Is she going for another suplex? She might be. Look at this. Got her up, maybe a stalling one, no. Amy able to shift her weight from behind and gives her a back suplex. Now Amy running in, went for the drop kick, but it gets it swatted away. Amy now running back in, right to the back now, the elbow, and another one. Again, Haley on the back foot because Amy Lynn is using her speed and quickness to her advantage, and that's the only way she's going to try and outwit her here. She can't outstrike her, or maybe she can. But her kind of striking and Haley's kind of striking are two completely different styles. And Amy's going to have to be aware of that. Amy's going to have to adapt, which she's known to do. Cover. Two. No. She's known to adapt to editing in all styles. She's done it in the past. I'm pretty sure she could do it again. Big DDT by Haley. Cover. Two. Two count. Again, this is the kind of match that I expected. Haley now, look at this. Big right hand. Again, using her right hands, using her strikes to keep Amy Lynn grounded. Because Amy might want to fly around for a little while, but Haley's just not letting her have any kind of breaks right now. She is getting beat the hell down, and she is getting stomped in the corner. A mud hole, if you will, being stomped into, into Amy Lynn right now. As now, grabbed her by the neck and just sends her onto the ropes. Back suplex, perhaps? No! Amy with an insecurity, very nice. And now, Butterfly, no, it gets an arm drag. Haley able to shift her weight and move her into an arm drag. Very nice by the Hellcat, but only a two. Both of these women, former Wildcats champions, I believe within a year of each other, they are Wildcats champions. Cover now, two, no. Of course, Revy beat Amy Lynn for that title a few years ago. Haley Jonas went in to Revelations, I believe, as the Wildcats champion. Cover. Two. No. So Haley Jonas and Amy Lynn, both very accomplished here in DCA. They have been to the dance. They know what it takes to win. They know what it takes to be on the top of the mountain here. And again, another cover. One, two, no. I mean, Haley Jonas, at one point, people were calling her the triple champion. 
She held the Wildcats title, the Queens of Wrestling title, and the XWA Diamonds title all at once. So to say that Haley Jonas isn't one of the most accomplished women in the game would be a, would be a lie. Because she has done it all. Amy Lynn done just as much. Former Wildcats champion, current Wildcats tag team champion. She is just as accomplished as Haley Jonas. Maybe not in the terms of winning three major singles titles like that and holding them all at one time, but you can't take away her own individual accomplishments either. Now Haley from behind. Look at this. Sidewinder suplex. Very nice. One, two, and again, Amy getting her shoulder up and Haley looking a bit frustrated and she can't let that happen. She can't allow frustration to set in right now when she's in a match like this with Amy Lynn. Big DDT. She's got to stay on the gas pedal right now. That is going to be her best asset to winning this match. And now Amy coming in with strikes. Amy kicked in the midsection and her big clubbing blow sends Haley. Oh, wow. Went for a double foot stomp, but Haley grabbed the leg at the last possible second. Tripped her up, but Amy still not bothered by it. And now it's Amy who's given Haley a taste of her own medicine. Giving her the mud hole in the corner. And now gives her a boot right to the mouth. Quickly into another cover. Only a two count. That's now, nope. Right here, Big Larry. Amy Lynn, just when you think she's in the driver's seat, Haley Jonas comes right back, and that's the, how dangerous this woman is. She does not stay down for very long. Back suplex. Taking Amy Lynn down, and now Amy having to roll to the floor. And now Haley off the apron with a lariat. And you don't normally see Haley Jonas flying around like that, but when the situation calls for it, she goes for it, and she nailed it right there. And now, look at this. Big Sayo suplex. Dropped her right on her neck with that one. Two. And Amy kicks out. And Haley wondering, what do I got to do to put this woman away? Completely understandable. A lot of women have said that about Amy Lynn in the past. What do I have to do to beat this woman? What do I have to do to get the victory against her? Because she's just so tough, she just won't stay down. And then again, people have said that about Haley Jonas as well. Equal stories between these two women. Oh, back elbow by Haley. And now here comes those boxing like strikes. Went for the boot. Haley didn't get it. Amy Lynn, look at this. Right across the knee. Into the cover. Two, no, two and three quarters right there. But Amy still can't manage to get that one decisive blow and neither can Haley. It's gonna come down to who wants it more, I believe. And now Amy Lynn off the ropes, there's a big lariat. Nice combination by Amy Lynn, only a two count. I know Hit Kid likes to call Amy Lynn the main perpetrator of the entire Succubus Club operation. The one calling, pulling the strings and calling the shots. I don't know about that one, but. I think Amy Lynn does play a big part. That's for sure. We saw her with Mia in that exclusive on Twitter saying how Ovana and the rest of the Looking Glass were proud of her for qualifying and that 
They expect Larry's Kawada kicks by Amy. How they expect Mia at Revelations to bring the Rising Star title to their to their group. Because Ovana's had her eye on Mia for a very long time now. And now that she's sort of an honorary member of the Looking Glass, they want Mia to bring that Rising Star title to them. And they feel like she can be the one to do that. But right now, Amy can't focus on Mia. She can't focus on Ovana. She can't focus on Selena. She's got to focus on Haley Jonas, and it looks like she's doing just that. Head scissors takedown. What a move by Amy Lynn. And now Amy going up top. Haley in the middle of the ring and rolling away at the very last second. Went for the one hit, Aquita didn't get it. Forearm. And there's the heel kick. Back heel kick. Cover. Two. Again, just a two count. And Haley can't believe it. Or excuse me, Amy Lynn can't believe it. As now Haley rolls her up. Small package, two, no. You gotta think. Both of these women want momentum heading into Revelations, heading into Gateway to Heaven. Amy Lynn going up top, or excuse me, Haley going up top. Amy Lynn gets blocked. Went for the fist, didn't get it. Amy from behind with a clubbing blow. As now, Haley up. Amy Lynn, big missile drop kick. And Amy Lynn right back in control. But Haley now, right when I said that, delivers some shots to the knee and now again these strikes. Sending her down in a clubbing axe handle. Giving her the business while she's down too. As now, Amy Lynn, big insecurity. No, Haley blocked it. More strikes. Haley off the ropes, went for the boot. Amy Lynn gets out of the way. Amy Lynn now with a roll up. Schoolgirl, one, two. Now Haley scoops her up for a pin of her own, but no. Amy Lynn, backslide. Backslide by Amy Lynn, no. Haley rolls in, nope. Gets out of the way, that heel kick. There's the one hit, a quitter. Haley Jonas may have knocked Amy Lynn out cold, but she does not. And now Amy rolling to the ropes, trying to get some kind of respite on the ropes. I completely understand that, but gets tossed. Amy Lynn tossing Haley out of the ring. And now it looks like Amy Lynn might be looking to fly here. Suicide dive to the outside. Oh, but Haley's back up and Amy doesn't realize it. Amy doesn't realize it, and now she does. Amy Lynn did not realize that Haley was up, but now Amy Lynn does realize it the hard way. Oh, kick to the midsection. Jawbreaker. Drop kick swatted away. Right hand, no. Count is up to five now. Both of these women got to get back in the ring. Haley, more lefts and rights. Missing the boot, Amy Lynn. Oh wait, ran into the number one stunner. Ran into the number one stunner. The referee's up to eight. And Haley finally getting Amy Lynn back inside the ring. But wait a minute. Final judgment on the floor. Selena Zeta with a blind side. The referee didn't see it. The referee didn't see that blindside and Amy Lynn wins it. The referee was checking on Amy when she got rolled into the ring and didn't see that Selena ran in with the, with the final judgment. And Amy Lynn gets the count out win. Wow. Amy Lynn 
sque squeezing by with a victory here. Thanks to so thanks to Selena Zeta. And Haley Jonas getting back up and gets another final judgment for our troubles. Selena Zeta making it perfectly clear that Haley Jonas is not a threat to her at all. Original sin on the floor. Selena sending a message to Haley before Gateway to Heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. This is DCA Wildcats, and as you just saw, the the beef between between Haley Jonas and Selena Zeta it's it's at a fever pitch at this point. It's at a fever pitch, and I I shudder to think what Haley's gonna do. When she gets her hands on Selena Zeta at Gateway to Heaven. Haley is going to be out for blood. But now we're getting set for our main event. Our six woman tag team match to preview the Gateway to Heaven ladder match for the Wildcats division. And here comes the woman who says she needs to win this match at Gateway to Heaven. Faith Connors. She said it a few weeks ago. She said it a couple of times now. How close she's been to the Wildcats title. The closest she came was Revelation 6. But she was taken out of the match. Not even five minutes into it. And she wonders what would have happened. If she had stayed in that triple threat. Between Destiny and Ovana. To win that match. If she could have. What would have happened if she won. Of course we know Ovana won the Wildcats title on that night at Revelation 6. As now, here comes one of the newest members of the Wildcats roster, Gravity's champion, Adriana Jaden. One of the biggest pickups DCA Wildcats has had. One of the most surprising pickups DCA Wrestling had when she arrived a couple of months ago and now she is one win away from a match at Revelations 9. But she still got seven other women to go through in that ladder match to do it. And here's one of them now, one of the most popular women on the Wildcats roster. And a woman who you know for a fact would love nothing more than to walk out of Gateway to Heaven with that briefcase. Can you imagine the scene if this woman, Madison Starr, walks out with that briefcase?
That would be the scene. The entire crowd chanting, cheering for Madison Starr. One of the most popular women, not just in DCA, but maybe even in the entire BWU and outside of it as well. Madison, of course, a former Wildcats Tag Team Champion, but she has never held singles gold in DCA. She's a former Soul Silver Champion for Queens of Wrestling, but she's never held a singles title in this company. But you know, she's just a few wins away from making that dream a reality. Madison Starr wants it so bad but so do the other women in this match. That's what makes this so interesting because there are a number of women in this match you can say needs, quote unquote, needs to win the ladder match. And here comes another woman who you could say would love the opportunity to win that ladder match. The current Soul Silver Champion, Annie Cortez. A title that I just stated Madison Starr has held before. The only singles championship in DC or in DCA or rather in BWU proper that Madison's even held. And Annie, the only woman in this match who is a current champion going in to Gateway to Heaven. If my memory serves me correctly. But Andy Cortez has been defending that Soul Silver Championship. We saw her defend it on the last episode of Wildcats against Jury Sonata. And after the match, we saw the platinum athlete Alexis Boone come out and it seems like that's going to be a future Soul Silver title match if that can get made official. But Annie can't worry about Alexis right now. She's got to focus on possibly becoming the number one contender for the Wildcats title at Revelations 9. Remember, she came into this company in a multi woman match for the Wildcats title back at Chaotix. So. She's not a stranger to it. And speaking of someone who's no stranger to the Wildcats title, here is the only other woman in this field that has held the Wildcats title, but the only woman in this match who's who can officially say she has won a Gateway to Heaven ladder match, Vanessa Price. One of the most prolific women in the Wildcast division. A lot of people can say there would not be a Wildcast division without people like Vanessa Price. And that is a that is a statement you can't really argue with. Season 2, Vanessa Price may not have been around as much because of what happened, but the rivalry she had with Akira Yukimura back in Season 2 defined that entire Wildcast division. The specter of Vanessa Price was all over that season. And then going forward, Vanessa would be a pivotal part of the Wildcats division. So to say that this woman is not a trailblazer for this company would be an understatement. Because this woman has done it all. But she still wants more. And if she wins the Gateway to Heaven ladder match, she could once again become the Wildcats champion. And you know she wants that deep down in her soul. She wants another title here in this company. She's already held the Fever title. She's a former Wildcats champion, as I stated. But she wants more gold. Will she get it? We'll see. And here comes a woman who I know wants to be Wildcats champion or a champion period in this company. Beryl Bedlam, 
Sister Savage is in the building. A woman who you know will love, will relish the opportunity to go into that gateway to heaven ladder match and powerbomb all six, or excuse me, all seven other women in it and get an opportunity to go to Revelation 9 and compete for the Wildcats title. Remember, it's going to be either Trixie Decker or Ovana Morgan that will walk into Revelations as the Wildcats champion after what that what happens in that title for title match. But I don't think Beryl gives a damn who it is. If she wins that briefcase, it doesn't matter to her who is the Wildcats champion. Her intent, her goal is to walk out with the Wildcats title. So, who's going to get it? We only got to wait a few more days. And now the tag team match is about to get underway. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of DCA Wildcats, episode 210. It is Annie Cortez, Adriana Jaden, and Madison Starr, or excuse me, Faith Connors, Adriana Jaden, and Madison Starr versus Annie Cortez, Beryl Bedlam, and Vanessa Price. Of course, Destiny Williams got the short, the uh, lucky draw here wouldn't say short end of the stick but a lucky draw here because she doesn't have to compete here tonight of course she's probably the most uh susceptible to damage in that ladder match considering she's still got that leg that's bothering her that'll probably always bother her for the rest of her life but to not have to compete tonight would probably it's probably a godsend to her so she can have as much time she needs to recover before going into that match. Of course, we know Destiny wants to win that match because she felt like she was screwed at Redemption when she had the match won, but Ovana took out the referee. She hit the Dream Killer, but the ref was down, so she couldn't get the pinfall. She had a visible pin, but didn't get the win off of it. So you know Destiny would love another opportunity to earn a shot at the Wildcats championship but then again if she does win that match let's just say hypothetically she did win it it's no guarantee that Obana would even be the champion because Beatrix might be the champion and all six of these women in this match including Destiny the seventh and then the eighth mystery entrant have got to be aware of the fact that we may have a completely different Wildcats champion by the end of Gateway to Heaven all these women in this match are expecting to fight Ovana, but they have to be very, very mindful of the fact that it could very well be Beatrix Decker with the role that the Blood Queen has been on the last two years here in DCA. She has been almost unstoppable. No one in DCA has pinned Trixie slash Beatrix shoulders to the mat in two years just about almost two years now so it's gonna be it's gonna be very tricky let's just say that and now another shooting star press onto Vanessa speaking of Trixie and uh, Ovana we're gonna be hearing from them coming up after this match As now, oh man, she didn't get all of it, but she got enough of it. Tag into Barrel Bedlam and gives Faith a boot. Faith Connors again, like I said, she's felt like she has been just treading water for the last two or two and a half, three years now. Ever since that fatal, that excuse me, that triple threat at Revelation 6, 
She's felt like every time she's had a chance to go back to the Wildcats title, someone or something stands in her way. And the last few years, it's been Takina and constant attacks from her that's kept Faith out of action for most of last season and part of this season, or excuse me, the last two seasons, rather. Seven, the seventh and eighth seasons. Came back this season wanting a fresh start. And now she's just one win away from becoming number one contender once again. But she's got to go through the ladder match to do it. But you got somebody like Adriana Jaden, one of the biggest names that we have ever had here in DCA. Came in with a big bang and is now close to becoming number one contender on her own right. Two count, no. And you can't, you gotta think a woman like Adriana Jaden coming into DCA with the name value that she has, with the reputation she has, and then she ends up winning the ladder match, that would be incredible. I mean, that would be absolutely astonishing. And it wouldn't be even, it w and here's the thing, it wouldn't even be surprising either because of how, of how much she's brought to the business. If you know where, if you know the history that she has and where she's been and the places she's wrestled. Big missile drop kick and inadvertently takes out Madison. But remember, these women can't lay a hand on each other before or after this matchup or they're out of the ladder match. That was the terms for both of these preview matches. These women have to stay separated until Gateway to Heaven. The only time they can lay their hands on each other is right now in this matchup as Barrel with a suplex to Faith. Cover now and Adriana breaking that up. It's going to be a very, very big night at Gateway to Heaven in just a matter of days. Please, please make sure to hit the notification bell so you know when that premiere link goes live. So you know when Gateway to Heaven will go up. Also, follow us on our social media pages so you know what day Gateway to Heaven will be live because you will know there first. It's going to be a big, big night. The last mega event before Revelations 9. Season 9 is almost over, folks. It's been one of the biggest seasons we have ever had. And we thank you for being here along for the ride. I thank you most especially for being here through it this entire season. It's been probably the biggest season we've had yet. We're going into our 11th year and our 10th season. Coming up starting June 1st. So get ready for that. Of course, June also. And I would be remiss if I did not mention the last lap. CCL's last lap coming this June, it's going to be a celebration, and we hope you are all going to be there for it. As now Faith tried to run in on Barrel, but Barrel just, just trucks her. I'm telling you, Barrel, Barrel is going to be a very big force in that ladder match by all accounts. There is not one bit. Oh, wow, look at that, Faith. With a head scissors counter off that power bomb attempt. Barrel Bedlam is a threat in that match, but let's be honest with ourselves here. Barrel is a threat any night of the week. And now, look at this. Again, just relentlessly up. Oh, going for something on. Vanessa Sunset Flip Powerbomb going after Vanessa Price's Faith. I think Faith wasn't too happy with Vanessa jawjacking her. But she's left herself wide open for Barrel to take advantage. Poison Rana. And Faith cannot let her emotions get the better of her when she's so close to this big moment at Gateway to Heaven. She cannot allow frustrations to get in the way because if she does she's going to lose out on the biggest opportunity of her career 
just going to lose out on a match at Revelations 9. It's now Barrel going for a pin on Adriana now, and Madison breaks it up. She had to break it up after that. As now, look at this. Just more strikes. And obviously, all six of these women want momentum heading into Gateway to Heaven by chance. Look at this. Sweet spot on Adriana just like that. And she might be looking for the finish here. Oh, no. Adriana caught the foot, but gets a heel kick for her trouble. And that's how dangerous Andy Cortez is. The night and day difference between the Andy Cortez of a few years ago and the Andy Cortez of today, is, it's like night and day. It's completely different here. This is a completely different side of Andy Cortez that we have seen. And I'm sure somewhere Carmen is happy about that. As much as, as sometimes Annie feels like she's not watching. Oh, she's watching. Trust me. She's watching. And she knows Annie can take care of herself. I mean, hell, she's a soul silver champion, for God's sakes. But that doesn't mean Carmen doesn't believe in her still. I know there's some people out there that think that she doesn't. And some people out there that still think that she's, you know, she'll never be with her again and all that kind of stuff. No, family's forever. And people got to realize that. If you love family, they'll always come back. And you got to trust that family that they will come back or there's no sense in calling them family. Madison now in. And a big elbow drop. Can you imagine if, if Madison pins Annie here? That would be a big feather in the cap and that would propel Madison to a future Soul Silver title match. It could be right here and barrel quickly in there. I mean, she sped, she torpedoed into the ring. She knew the, she knew what was happening. As now, uh oh, look at this. Annie got Madison by the hair and sends her into the turnbuckle. Tags in Barrel. Big boot, big knee. Annie and Barrel know each other very well, so that's is not a surprise. And now, look at this. Tags in Vanessa now. Vanessa's in. And Madison, no clue where she's at. Uh-oh. Vanessa pump handle slam. One of her trademark maneuvers. Two count. That's it. Madison did not have any offense left. And... Vanessa just took advantage of it, and that was all she wrote. And Vanessa, Annie, and Beryl get the momentum heading into Gateway to Heaven. And this has got to be soul-crushing for Madison to come up short in this match. But Madison couldn't take any more abuse from, from Beryl, from Annie, from... Vanessa and now will one of these three women win the gateway to heaven ladder match they got a they got a shot at it but we'll see coming up in just a few days time Trixie and Ovana is coming up next Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the biggest mega event in Call Wrestling. This is Call All-Stars 16.
Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. We are about to hear from both Ovana and Trixie Decker leading into their match at Gateway to Heaven for the Wildcats title and for the Goddess title. It's title for title. But there's one thing we got to do now, and that's run down the card for Gateway to Heaven coming up in just a few days time like I said please make sure to hit the notification bell and subscribe if you are not subscribed so you know when this show goes up it's going to be a big one five hours of action coming your way in just a few days time the Lotus Collective will challenge Betsy Chairshot and Amy Lynn for the Wildcats Tag Team Championships who leaves as champions we heard from her earlier, Ariane Sophie Jones and two partners take on Michko Melandro, Danny Rojas, and Lauren Richfield in a six-woman tag. Can Ariane find two partners, or has she found them already? Travis Touchdown takes on Charles Schultz. Travis says it's not about titles right now. It's about humbling Charles, but can he do it against the living nightmare at Gateway to Heaven, or will Charles put another threat down in his reign Haley Jonas you saw it earlier attacked by Selena Zeta will Selena come back will that come back to haunt Selena as she defends her fever title against the Hellcat at Gateway to Heaven we'll find out in just a few days Atlas Jones accepted the open challenge made by James Dark and now Dark will defend his Battle Pro World Championship against Atlas Jones at Gateway to Heaven. Can Atlas win another title? Gateway to Heaven men's ladder match. Dante Styles, Takuma Fuji, John Blackos, Malik Brown, Jaden Starr, James Needham, Haru Glory, and an eighth mystery entrant. One man's going to get to win this Gateway to Heaven ladder match and challenge the world champion at Revelations 9. And then the women's ladder match. Faith Connors, Andy Cortez, Adriana Jaden, Vanessa Price, Madison Starr, Beryl Bedlam, Destiny Williams, and an eighth mystery woman. The winner faces either Ivana Morgan or Trixie Decker for the Wildcats title at Revelations 9. Sly Cooper, the Thievius Raccoonus, won his shot. And now he challenges Tyler Parks. For the DCA World Heavyweight title. Who's going to Revelations as the top man on takedown? We find out in a few days' time. And then the main event, the one everyone's talking about. Ovana Morgan puts the Wildcats title on the line against Beatrix Decker, putting the Goddess title on the line. The two co-members of the Succubus Club collide, but only one will leave with both of the top titles on Wildcats. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be explosive. Gateway to Heaven is just a few days away, so do not miss it, folks. Please leave a like and subscribe if you are not, and hit the bell so you know when to be notified of this event. It's going to be one of the biggest on the calendar, and we are closing in on Revelations 9. This is the final event, the final mega event before that big show, so do not miss out on Gateway to Heaven. And coming up here and now, we are going to hear from both Ovana Morgan and Beatrix Decker. And here comes the Wildcats champion herself. She has held that championship since Proving Ground 9 when she won that title from Ellie Rose. Some people say that this has been the reign of spite on Ovana's case for how she was, in her view, robbed of the Wildcats title years ago. And she has done anything and everything it takes to hold on to that belt ever since. But now, she's got to go up against a woman who hasn't been beaten in two years. A woman who 
let's be honest, has more in common with Alvana than she may even realize. A woman who I'm pretty sure wants that title just as much as Alvana wants to keep it. And as much as Beatrix says that she's happy that Alvana is the champion and she's happy that Alvana has success, you know deep, deep down on the inside that Beatrix Decker would love nothing more than to hold that Wildcats title up over her head again and reign as the top woman on the roster. Some Hell, some people say Trixie is the top woman on the roster. She just needs that Wildcats title. That's the only thing that's missing. And Ovana, you know, she doesn't like that. She doesn't like people saying that she's not the top woman, that Trixie is. So this had to happen eventually. This clash between these two women had to happen eventually. And now it's going to happen. Whether either woman likes it or not, Remember, it was Trixie's decision. Lucinda gave her the option. She could either challenge Obana for the title. She could go into the Gateway to Heaven ladder match, which is why there's a mystery entry, because Trixie declined to go to the ladder match. Or she could choose an opponent for her goddess title. She didn't choose that either. She chose to face Obana title for title. That's what she wanted. And that's exactly what she's going to get at, at uh, Gateway to Heaven. You can feel the chill in the air every time this woman comes out. And there she is. The current... DCA Goddess Champion. And if I'm right, and I might be, she is the longest reigning Goddess Champion in this company's history. And probably the most dominant in this company's history. She has held that title for 13 months. And no one has been able to take that belt off of her. No one has been able to pin this woman in a DCA ring in two years that is how dominant this woman has been as much as she may not want to believe it as much as she may think she's not as dominant that she's not the focal point let's just call a spade a spade folks she has been the prominent woman on the wildcats roster for two years now she has been the biggest threat to anyone stepping to her. She has beaten every woman that has come in her path. Every woman that has challenged for that title has either been in the hospital or has been put down by Beatrix Decker. Even before Beatrix became Beatrix, she was the, that threat. And now, she may have the opportunity to, to do what only one other woman on this entire roster has done. Carmen Cortez is the only woman that has held two Wildcats titles at once in this company of the top titles I'm talking about and Beatrix has a chance to do it at Gateway to Heaven she just has to beat her friend her girlfriend her co-partner to do it the lights are out and the lights are on and there's Trixie that's not Beatrix that's Trixie Decker and I think Ovana realizes that this is not going to be against Beatrix at Gateway to Heaven. I think Trixie wants it to be Trixie and, and, and Ovana. That's what it's going to be. Beatrix isn't going to be there. It's going to be Trixie Decker because she respects Ovana that much to not hurt her as much as Beatrix would. This is what's going to go down at Gateway to Heaven. Title for title between these two queens. Who's walking out as a double champion? We'll find out in a few days, folks. We'll see you there.
想怎么？